Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? What's up? Yep. Uh, hi, Dr. Muster. All right, it's good to see you all. All right, thanks for coming today. I'm going to uh, I'm going to share my screen here, and I'm going to uh, to go through the go through the syllabus for the course and give you some guidelines about uh, how to how best to prepare for things and and what to do. This will be recorded, so you'll be able to access this recording a bit later. Does anybody have any questions before I before I get going? Okay, if you do have any questions at the end, I'll uh, I'll I'll have some time there for you to to be able to do that. Okay, let's go to, oh, what are we doing? Let's go to desktop, I guess. No, I don't want to do desktop. Google Chrome is wrong. Okay, I'm still getting used to, I'm still getting used to Zoom here. But uh, let's, uh, let's go through the, let's go through the syllabus. Okay. Uh, hopefully, you've had a chance to read the read the syllabus. Um, the, you, you see the equipment re requirement here: a PC or Mac with a re webcam uh, compatible with Onlock. And I'm no noting here that iPads are not Onlock compatible. You can try the Onlock practice exam, which is somewhere here. There it is. The Onlock practice exam to have a go at it and see if you can make make sure that everything's compatible with it. Uh, there's no uh, no real attendance requirement for the online course. It's really just about making sure you get the stuff done before the due dates. And uh, we've got a schedule of due dates down here. Uh, yes, down here. And you can see when the tests are. And uh, the way this is set up, you've got, uh, it's a Tuesday, Thursday course. That's how it's, that's how this is going to be scheduled. Just like the lab is a Tuesday, Thursday course. Uh, a lot of you are in one of my lab sections, and I think you all know that I'm going to have a noon noon session on Zoom. Just that's going to be strictly for the lab. So, uh, so hang out for that if you're if you're going to do that. This just this shouldn't take too long. I'm hoping we can get through this in maybe half an hour or so for the for this first one. So you'll notice that everything for the first test is going to be due on six uh, four is what it will be. So that's Thursday. Six one is the Monday. Six four will be the will be the Thursday for that. Can you all see my screen? I just want to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Does anybody have any questions so far about due dates? Where does it show the six four due date? Hang on. Let me uh, let me turn up the volume here. Say it again, please. Where does it show the six four due date for the test oh. one materials? It says, uh, well, it says here, Tuesday is to the left of the semicolon, Thursday is on the right. And you can see this is the week of, so that's the Monday. And that means oh, okay. the materials are due on the, on the Thursday. All right, I understand. Okay. Uh, I had another question about that. Um, when mm -hmm. I was looking through the things that are graded, it says that test three has an essay question. Yes, and that's right. And a unit quiz besides the test. Are there that's three right. different parts to the test? There are, are yes. Yes, that's right. Three different things that you have to do for credit. Uh, only the only the quiz though is done under on a lock. No, I mean the sorry the practice practice quiz uh, or practice test three or test three is done under on a lock. The units quiz isn't, but that is still part of the grade. Now, uh, you know, but this is the kind of thing that I'll talk about during the Zoom sessions as well when we get to those when we get to those points. In the in the course. All right. I've uh, noticed, yes. I have a quick question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that you mentioned that um, we don't use our own calculator. We use the Honor Lock calculator. That's right. Is there a, a way that we can practice with that? Because I'm pretty speedy on my calculator that I've been using for you know the last year, but I, I don't know how how fast I'm going to be with clicking through the Honor Lock version. Is there um, a way that we can practice? Yeah, I think it, through the, I think through that uh, practice test, I think it, it's, it's accessible through that because I think I oh, okay. enabled it there. 
uh, once you've once you've got the Onalock extension installed on Chrome, there's a link that I'll, I'll send out as well uh, that enables you to just access it directly without going into that practice test. But I'll, I'll handle oh, that good. a bit okay. later. Okay. And can we go ahead of this? Um, like, how far ahead can we go? For the syllabus schedule that you have here, like, can we take the tests early if we were prepared oh, the week prior? Yeah, as far as you want. Take it as far Fantastic. as you want. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So it's so really self-paced then. Pretty much. Yeah, but I mean, I, you know, I'll, I'll be doing some pacing, especially by by doing the Zoom sessions, and obviously the due dates provide pacing as well, because uh, it's really the due dates that you have to watch. Uh, you can get okay. anything done before the due date. That's not a problem. It's uh, perfect. It's when, okay. It's after the due date that. <laughs> we run into hassles, right? Okay, thank you. All right, what else have we got here? Uh, I've yeah, the textbook. Textbook's completely optional. If you want, you can use the Tro textbook, and you can get any edition of that. There's this really, there's this website. It's related to a very long river in South America that I can't say the name of. <laughs> got I it. You, I think you might know, uh, and you should. You should go and uh, and go there and get an early edition of the book, which you can pick up for under twenty dollars, which I don't see as being unreasonable at all. All right, but don't don't pick up the latest edition. It's like three hundred dollars. That's ridiculous. Nobody should have to pay that for a textbook. It hasn't changed that much. A lot. It's a lot of money. A lot of money. 10 bucks, 20 bucks. I, I don't see that as being unreasonable though. I think it's okay. Okay. Uh, now, miss test. If you, if you do miss, if you happen to miss a, a quiz taking a, or taking one of the actual tests, you can replace that by taking the final. Uh, I really want you to try and stick to the, stick to the due dates though, please. There's also going to be opportunities for extra credit. All extra credit is going to be due on, uh, at 11.59 p.m. on the night before the test is due. Now, that doesn't mean the test has to be done on that day. The test could be done any time. But I'm just saying that that's when the extra credit's going to close. So let me talk about what I mean by the extra credit. So let's go to test one here. This is a test one folder. All right, so what, I, what have I got in the test one folder? Well, I've got the lecture notes here. That's the PowerPoints I would usually go through in class. I'll talk about the ungraded copy in the test one in a minute. We've got, I'll come back to those as well in a second. I've got the mini lectures. I think these are going to be of most value to you. These are the mini lectures, which will go through all of the different kinds of questions. Now you'll notice, see, I've got these Q1, Q2. This is actually, these are actual questions on the pen and paper tests. But the test that you'll be taking mirrors what you're seeing on the, on the pen and paper tests as well. Now what I mean by the pen and paper tests are these down here. You can see I've got a bunch of old tests here. And you can look at those to get an idea of the kinds of questions that you'll be asked. But uh, you, you'll, you'll have access to the test anyway, so that you can see what you'll be able to experience all of that as you go. But uh, these, are, these are just so you can know what kinds of things are being talked about when I refer to, when I refer to these mini lectures and I've got these questions beside it here and what they refer to. Does anybody have any questions so far? Okay, so that's... Actually, that, I, wait, I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's all right. So I'm, I, I've been kind of doing the mini lectures and, and trying okay. to do some of the quizzes and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I've noticed that the order of the mini lectures is sometimes different than the order of the quizzes versus the order of the videos that are on YouTube. Yeah, is that, there one that's, you know, the best way to view it? Like the, the way that you seem to have the videos on YouTube seems to be you know, linear in thought, meaning you're building on, on the ideas versus how the quizzes are loaded, not necessarily. Uh, right. Uh, I, would, I would say that's probably true. Donna, was that you who was talking? It is. It is Donna, yeah. yes. All right. So uh, what I would do is uh, I've got them set up in order of the lecture notes. So the lecture notes, uh, which is a PowerPoint 
is in the same order, goes through the same order of topics as the mini lectures does. The, the quizzes I tried to arrange pretty much as uh, in order of the same thing as I was doing it on the, uh, maybe not. No, it looks like it's more in order of the, no, I can't even say it's in order of questions really. <laughs> well, yeah, it's in more, it's more in order of the questions on the, on the test. I, I would, I would go in order of the mini lectures though, to answer your question and then, okay. then pick up the topics from the, from the quizzes below that. I think that's how I'd best handle it if I was you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Now, as a student, you're going to see something a little different. Let me go in here as a student. And I'll show it as you see it. Okay, so in each of these folders, and these are the topic folders that, uh, that Donna was just alluding to, it, you, you've got a practice quiz. That's all you'll see initially. And the credit quiz won't appear until you get 80% on the practice quiz. The practice quiz is not for credit. It's really just format training. That's what I want you to think of it as. You can do it as many times as you like. If you're really worried about the formatting, what you can do, let me see if I can find something that's, you know, I just, none, none of these really problematic as far as formatting goes, but if ever you run into something and you, you're not sure of how I'm going to want an answer, you can just start the quiz. See, these are all multiple choice, so it's not really a good example, but there are going to be some quizzes you, you'll take that are going to be very format dependent. And what you can do is you can just submit that practice quiz without putting in any answers. And then it will actually tell you what the answers are. But more importantly, if it's a fit quiz that requires some sort of specific formatting, then you don't have to guess what the formatting is. You can see that by looking at the answers. Sometimes students run into some problems. They get very frustrated because they don't know how I want the practice quiz set out. That's how you can find out how I want it set up. All right, any questions? Now, uh, I will go also go through how you can look at past attempts of a quiz. So what you can do is you can go to quizzes and you can see all of the different things you've taken here. They're all listed, how many attempts you've had and all of that. And if you have an attempt at something, you click on this little down arrow and then click on submissions and there's your attempt. So you can see that at any time after you've taken a quiz. Now, of course, all the answers are always given to you. For these, all the quizzes are counted as extra credit for the test, you said, correct? That's correct, yes. Yes, all of these and, quizzes, yeah. Which is wonderful. Now, do you only get the extra credit if you get 100% or do no. you get partial credit? No, you can get as much, you get whatever you get. So if you okay. get 50%, well, it, the way it's set up, though, in the syllabus, if you look at the extra credit, I haven't gone through that yet, but the... It, you get, it's half it's half of the total points grade. The reason okay. I have that is is that I wanted to have each of these quizzes be 0.5 of a point, but my courses won't allow me to do that. So I have to make it a full point, but then it gets divided by two before it gets added to your to your total grade. So that's how that's how the that's how the extra credit will work. Is that okay, Donna? Absolutely. Thank you. Now, the other thing is that you might want to know, well, what have I done? What do I need to do? Well, look at your grade report. That's the, that's the thing that I would focus on. And here, here it is here. It shows you exactly what you've done and what you haven't done. So here's the extra credit for test one. This is everything here. As I said, let's see, there's seven, there's seven points here. It's really three and a half points because whatever you get here gets divided by two but it still becomes part of your grade. If you want a running total of how much you've got as extra credit, then go down here to test one complete and that will show you exactly how many points you have before you take the test. But I would still use the, I'd use the grade report here as my guide as to what I've done, what I haven't done. 
Okay, that's, uh, so that, that's the main thing I want to tell you about the extra credit. So remember, you do have to do the practice quiz first. The other thing is that the credit quiz is not going to come up in the calendar until you've done the practice quiz and got 80% on it, not until it appears. So that's a bit of a danger as well. Some people think, oh gosh, this isn't in the calendar. It means I don't have to do it. Well, it just hasn't appeared in the calendar yet. It will appear in the calendar definitely once you've done the practice quiz. So use the practice quizzes as your guide as to when things are due as well. All right, anybody got any questions? Okay, not, so not a question, yeah. but more of a statement. I like how you have it set up where you can just have us succeed if we literally just do the work. That's mm. Well, that's the idea. That's the idea. And of course, you know, I'll be here for you. That's a thing. Not just in the Zoom sessions. I will be having the optional Zoom sessions every, every 10 a.m. Tuesday, just like we're doing today. But I don't, you know, you don't have to come to those, but I will be here for those. And the main focus of those Zoom sessions is going to be the topics that you should have already looked at. And I'm just really going to be doing problems similar to the ones that you're doing in the actual test that you'll be taking. That's going to be my main focus. I want you to be successful with that, especially. But I believe that you should be able to go through the work. If you have any specific questions after you've gone through it, you can definitely, I'll, I'll, I'll allow some time during the Zoom sessions for those as well. But I want you to have some sort of knowledge going into the actual um, Zoom session. And by way of um, by way of a guide here, I, I've got these different links to the it's the same mini lectures are in, as are in that folder as to what you should look at before before that uh, Zoom session, and that'll give you an idea of the kinds of questions I'm going to focus on. So next week, next Tuesday. I'm going to be doing reaction kinetics, orders of reactions with a single reactant and applications to rate equations. These two are relatively easy. The applications of rate equations, that's the really difficult one. That's what I'll be spending the bulk of the time on next week. That's the one that's going to confuse you the most, but I think you'll find having me go through problems and seeing them will be really, really helpful to you. So I, if you can make it next week, great. If you can't, remember, I will be recording it anyway, and you can always go back and look at it later. But actually being here, there's nothing like being here. Okay. All right. Uh, online testing. All right. Let's talk about the tests. That's the main thing, especially for test one and two. And then I'll talk about test three and four, Miriam. Uh, sorry, Mariam. Test one. So the way it's set up is there's an ungraded copy of test one here, and then there's test one. Both of these are the same test. Every time you take this ungraded copy, you get different questions, but they're always questions of the same type. And then this is just the same thing. What's the difference? Well, one's for credit and one isn't. You only get one attempt at, test, at this test one here under honor lock, but you have multiple attempts under the ungraded copy. With test one, you're allowed to have one page of notes. So I'm allowing you to have one page of notes, front and back, handwritten, but you can use with the test. Now, any of the reference sheets you won't need, they'll actually be in the test. So let me show you. I don't know if there are any in this one. Oh, there might be, hang on. Yeah, there are, I think. Here we go. So for example, question two here requires this reference sheet, which is there for you right in the test. So you don't need to copy any of that stuff down. You can expect the real test or the test you'll be taking to have exactly the same thing in it. Right, isn't it? I'm not trying to be tricky or anything else here. It's very transparent. It's just that you're going to get different questions each time. My thought is you would probably want to take this test multiple times open book so that you can get an idea of how to do everything. But then you'd also want to take it multiple times closed book or just with one page of notes, just under the same conditions. And if you can get 90% under the same conditions, I don't understand why you would fail the other test. 
because it's the same test. But that's it. That's it. There's one thing that I would caution you about. Just make sure that you've, you're doing it under the same conditions as you're doing the real test. Does anybody have any questions about this? Are we allowed to have the one page of notes for all the tests or only test one? No, all of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's ha they're handwritten notes, Samantha. Okay. Is there any specific reason why we have to use the honor lock? Yeah. Uh, well, the main thing, uh, there's, there's two reasons. I, I don't like it either. I, I, let me let me say this up front. But the, the main thing is I want to know that the person taking the, the test is actually the person who's logged in. That's, that's true. Important. Because yeah. if you go on the internet, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest about this. You go on the internet, just type in, I want somebody to take my online test. Pretty easy. You can find anybody to do it. You have to pay them, but they can do it. And all you need to do is give them your, uh, give them your login information and, and they can go in, they can take the test for you. So that's the, that, that's the main, that's the main issue about it. Also, it's, uh, it locks down your browser and stops you going to places that I don't want you to go. Just keeps you in on task with the actual test. So that's the, that's the other main reason that I, that I use it. Mm -hmm. But no, I don't like it either. I wish I didn't have to use it. I have actually gone the other route. I have actually left students to their honor, but I've found that what happens is if, if people don't, if people think that other people are cheating, that's going to give them justification to cheat. I'm sorry, but that's the, that's what studies show. Trying to be as, trying to be as forthright and upfront as I can be with this, but that's, a, that's where I'm at with it. I'm sorry about that. It's all good. It's all good. All right. Thank you. All right. Any other any other questions about the the tests so far? Okay. Uh, I'm going to just submit this, and and as you can see, you get all the answers, right? You get all the answers. So if you've done something wrong, you'll know exactly what you did and what the answer should have been. Of course, if you still have questions, you can always, you can always email me or talk to me during the Zoom session. Either way. Is email the best way to contact you with questions if, as we're going through things? Yes, yeah, yes it is. But the thing is, if you need me to call you, I would be happy to do that as well. Just okay. let me know. Just okay. usually, usually just to send me your phone number. I do have phone numbers, but sometimes they're not, they're not current. Okay. So um, if you do, if you send me your phone number and let me know when to call you, okay. uh, then, then I'll do that. I'm okay. pretty much free all the time. So it's, I don't, you know, if you give me a window, I'll be usually be able to, to do that. All right. Uh, now the other thing, and this is really cool too. Uh, just going to toot my own horn here for a little bit. I did videos for every single question type in the ungraded copy. So, you know, if you're concerned about formatting of a question or how it's worded or how to do it, then there it is there. There's a, those are all the practice test video questions or examples of them anyway. Should this be the first thing you look at? Absolutely not. No, it's going to be hard to, to get that test done without some sort of context, you're going to need you're going to need some knowledge. It's not enough just to to know how to do the problems. You're going to have to understand a little bit of the background as well that goes along with that. That's why it's so important to watch the mini lecture videos and not just go straight here. And I'll know I'll know if you if you're just sending me a question and saying oh you know blah 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 and I'll say oh yeah well obviously you haven't watched the the, the background behind it. And I'll I'll direct you to, to be doing that first before I before I get into detail about answering a question. I think you, you re, it's really important that you do that, that you re, watch those uh, mini lectures and uh, have some understanding of what's going on before you do the test. All right, does anybody have any questions? Okay, so those quizzes, um, yeah, go on. Sorry, so the uh, majority of the learning itself should be coming from the mini lectures and not like the lecture PowerPoint? 
or both really but uh, but i would if it was you if it was me in your shoes i'd be watching the mini lectures because that's the that brings all the information together much better than just reading the powerpoints the powerpoints are going to be the same thing but the mini lectures are much more detailed and much more interactive what about right, any the other? go on sorry adrian what about the textbooks? Should we study from the textbook at all? I, I would use the textbook as just a secondary reference if you wanted to know more information about a certain topic. Okay. You might also find uh, the textbook useful for the essay questions, which I haven't gotten to yet. Okay. All right, so test two is pretty much the same setup as test one. You'll have the ungraded copy of test two and then test two. And then again, those will be the same thing. So if you can be successful with the ungraded copy under, under test conditions, then there's no reason you shouldn't be successful with doing test two and uh, doing an under on, on a lock. That's the only difference that you'll have. And again, that has, that has extra credit associated with it as well. And all that extra credit is in these folders here. Test three. Test three has three, three sections to it. There is going to be the test, which is worth 70%. There's also this units quiz. Now, you see, the thing is, there's a lot of questions that require some sort of working out. And I really like people, I really like to know people have an understanding of how the units cancel in these kinds of problems. So that's why I've got this test three units quiz here. It has unlimited attempts and I, I don't, I don't know. Actually, I don't think I've got, I don't think it gives you the answers. Yeah, you're going to have to, you, it's a trial and error type thing. You're going to have to be able to, to figure it out, figure out the units on your own and the dimensional analysis of how that goes. So let me show you what that test three unit quiz looks like. And that unit quiz is not through honor lock, correct? No, it isn't. No. Okay. So just that main test part, the 70%. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. right. And it's, it's got a, it's got a time limit on it of two hours, but you won't need two hours for the units quiz. I mean, that's, that's just way, way too much time. For some reason, I don't seem to be able to start this quiz, but uh, all right. It's probably because I'm in student mode. I'll, uh, I'll go back in as a, go back in as myself. So I just want to be able to preview it. I will make sure that you can access that quiz, but I think it, you should be able to. April 27th. Uh, no, that's the problem. <laughs> All right, it's got the due date. The due date's on, on is wrong. All right, I'll fix that. Yeah, so I'll just show you what this units quiz looks like. And this is the idea here. It's a matching type thing. And you'll have to put in the specific unit in each of these cases uh, to show how the dimensional analysis occurs. And this is my way of, of making sure that you understand the formatting and how to, how to do the, the setting out of the units. It's not just about getting the answer. You know, I want people to be able to use these units as well. So that's the whole point of that. All right, any questions about the units quiz? It shouldn't be too bad for you. Right? It, obviously in the, in the mini lectures, it, it shows you how all that setting out occurs and what kind of units. So you can always go back to that to, to prepare for the, the units quiz as well. All right, there's going to be an essay question as well. Now the essay questions are going to be done individually by you. They're gonna be handwritten and they're gonna be on these topics here. You can, you can access these topics by looking in your textbook or you can go on the internet and find information about them. I'm not looking for references or anything. Uh, what, I'm, what I am looking for are essays. There are only 50 words each for each one and each essay needs to include a reaction that relates to what you wrote in the essay. 
So this does create uh, some, some issues for people. Uh, they wonder about my formatting, what, I, what exactly I'm looking for. I'm really looking for exactly just what I'm looking for here. What I say, just a 50 words about reactions you find that relate to these topics. And then they, those get submitted into the Dropbox. And those are worth 20% of the, of the grade. And generally for most people, it is an easy 20%. Does anybody have any questions about the requirements for test three? How do we turn in the uh, handwritten essays? Is it going to be something that we scan in in the email, or is it how is that going to work? It's a Dropbox. So let, let's uh, let me see. I'll, I don't, I don't I haven't got the right due date on this. Let me let me get a due date on this properly here. June, July second. Like, does that have to be handwritten or is it a Word yeah. document? No, no, it has to be handwritten. Ah, all right. And you, and you sign across it as well. That, that lets me know that it's going to be unique. Yeah. Do you want us to, like, physically sign across it or do you yes. want us to, like, do, like, a watermark? No, no, sign, physically sign across it with you, with, just with a pen. Okay. And again, it's just, it's, I'm being honest here. It's just, just so people don't share it with somebody else and have them copy theirs. I, mean, I want it to be unique. That's the, uh, that's the, that's the key. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to go into, let's see. Who was a student here. I'll show you what the Dropbox looks, looks like. Here we go. So this is it here. It says test three essay question drop box. And when you click on it, it gives you a place to upload the file. Now you can only upload one file. And that means if you, if you're taking pictures of something, you need to combine the images into a single PDF or doc file. So if it's a PDF file, yeah, there are, apps you can get that will do that. But the easiest thing for you, if you're not sure how to do it as a PDF, is to open up a Word document and just paste the pictures into the Word document and upload it to the Word document. I don't want people uploading zip files that are full of pictures. I'll just, I won't, I won't accept that. If they're opened in this way, then I can open it directly and look at it and grade it. I don't have to open individual pictures. That's the way. I, that's why I've got it set up this way. Everybody understand that? Anybody have any questions? And we're writing fifty words for mm -hmm. each of the topics, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Not like we're not picking and choosing. We're just for each of them fifty I, words with a reaction. That's right. That's right. Any other questions? Now, test four is set up the same way. And there's going to be the ungraded copy, then you've got the graded copy here, then you've got the test four units quiz, and then you've got the essay question for that as well, which, uh, which, uh, which I will obviously make available to you. Oh, the, the dates here are uh, dates here are incorrect so I'll, I'll fix that but yeah you'll uh, you'll be able to access those it's going to be the same sort of setup as it was for test three everything else is set up the same way in each of the tests okay any other any other questions about that just looking at the the brief description that I see on the screen um, mm. for the essays, there's not a specific question about them. So it's just that topic. We're trying to find one reaction and describe the reaction. Is that correct? Yeah, talk about the reaction or uh, or talk about like, something even related to the reaction. There's a lot of uh, I give a lot of latitude there. Okay. Uh, it's really the whole point of it is for to let me know that you've you've read a little bit about that topic. That's, okay. that's, the, that, that's all that the intent is here because I could say, I could assign that as reading, but if I don't put something in there to say, well, you know, to let me know that you've actually done it, then most people have good intentions of doing it, but then, but they won't do it. So. 
Okay. Um, right. I have a question about that. Mm -hmm. So will we, like, in order to be able to learn about this topic, will we have to purchase a textbook or no. will, no, or will no. this topic be like in the, in the middle of the uh, PowerPoint, um, like information and we have to look at outside research on it? No, no, no. You'll be able to get the information off the internet. Just do a Google search. Millions okay. of words have been written about all of these topics. You won't have trouble finding finding the information you need. I can guarantee it. All right. Any other questions? Okay. I'm just going to go back through the syllabus here. I don't think I've talked about grading yet. So let's talk about grading. So the four tests are worth 20% uh, each. I showed you in, in your grade report how you can access that information about what you're getting on each test and what each test is worth and how those are all added up. So let's, uh, let's, go, let's go back to that for a second. What's going to be your key focus here will be these complete grades, which adds everything together. So test one complete is everything that includes the extra credit. Test two complete is everything includes the extra credit. Test three is the units quiz, the test, and the essay question, all of that combined together to give that grade that you'll see here. So it's a very calculation heavy grade book, which brings me to another point, is that this current overall grade is not going to be a very good indicator of how you're doing. What will be though, is this down here, which tells you your grade as of each test. So if you're looking for a running letter grade, that's what, you're, that's what you should focus on, are these down here, which you'll be able to access after you've completed the materials for each test. You won't really be able to look up here. And I, I'm, sorry that, I'm sorry that this won't show your actual grade up here, but it can't under the basis, of, because of it's such a calculation heavy and formula heavy grade book. I was told by I was told by somebody that I'm only one of three instructors who uses formulas in grade books. So that's that's kind of why you, you might not see it anywhere else. But I see it as being more valuable than being actually able to see your current grade up here. So you can see it down here instead. All right, anybody got any questions about that? All right, so going back to what I was talking about here with the, the grading. So each of those is effectively worth 20% and the final exam is also worth 20%. And you can actually exempt taking the final if you score more than 90% on those complete test grades, all of them. And you can exempt the final with a B if you get more than 80% on all of them. If you get less than 80% on any of them, then you'll have to take the final. The final replaces, <coughs> excuse me, the final replaces the lowest test grade if you do take it, or if it doesn't replace the lowest test grade, then it just gets averaged in with the other tests. All right, does anybody have any questions about exempting the final or, or the conditions I have there? Okay. So is it the average of all four tests that has oh. to be higher than 80 to not take the final or you have to get an 80 on each test? You have to, to get an 80 on each test. It's not an average, no. If you're going to exempt the final, my, my thought is that if you, in order to exempt the final with a certain grade, then you needed to have gotten that grade across those tests, not okay. just the average. That's a good question. Right, any other questions about that, about the grading? Uh, any other questions about anything that I've talked about today? So the lab is at 12? That's right. Yeah, I'm is going it, to, yep. Yeah, I'll be talking about the lab then. Is it gonna be through, um, through the, uh, my course is lab instead of just the lecture for the zoom meetings or is it going to be in the lecture no it's in the actual lab shell itself there's a separate link 
I'm actually running two sections and what I've done is I've put the same link in both sections because they both need both sections need the same need the same information. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to access it there from the zoom folder. I think I also sent it out in an email to the link so you can access it there as well. Okay. Right. Any other any other questions anybody has about anything that I've talked about today? Well, just a big thank you. I very much like how you've structured this. Um, it makes it very easy to go through it and you've chunked up the, the information into really fabulously digestible bits. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. So uh, I guess the, the only thing left to, for me to do is just to give you an idea of what I think you should be doing over the next week or so. I would, if it was me, I would be going through the mini lectures, especially the ones I, I put in the syllabus for the Zoom session, which relate to questions one, two, and five. So one, two, and five are up to, I guess, this point here in the, uh, in the list. And I would definitely go through all of those videos. And then I would attempt some of the stuff that relates to that. So it would be the reaction orders, the reaction orders for single reactants and the rate equations and reactions. And you'll notice the rate equations and reactions. I've also got a, uh, I've, I've got some worksheets in there as well. And I'd recommend attempting, at least attempting those before the Zoom session. But I'm going to be going through those, through those in, uh, worksheets in the Zoom session and also the kinds of problems that you'll see in the test as well. Because these are going to be the hardest ones for, for test one. That's why I recommend coming next week if you possibly can. All right, so that's what you should be working on over the next week. I'd also do the extra credit quizzes too that relate to that. And obviously, if you're having trouble with those, you know, that's a, a great time for me to, to go through that would be during the Zoom session as well. I didn't notice that there was an extra credit quiz for the um, rate equations, just it, those it, worksheets. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. It, it wasn't something, you know, it, it's not something I really came up with until, until this semester because I needed, I know I needed something there, but I haven't been, I hadn't been able to do it, but I've, I have done it now and I've, I've incorporated it within that practice test, that ungraded okay. practice test. That would be what I would focus on that. Let me, let me say one other thing about these ungraded practice tests. Since you can do this unlimited times, that means that you can just do one problem. If you want, make sure you're getting the right answer and submit it. You don't have to do the whole thing. So that's a good way to, to study certain questions would be just to do those questions again and again, and you'll get different ones each time. And that's a good way to practice. Just to confirm the lecture notes and principal test notes on that page right there, they're exactly mm -hmm. the same, correct? They're just two different formats. Yeah. One, one is printable. I mean, if you try and print these PowerPoint notes, you're going to run out of blue ink pretty quick. If you're, uh, if you're running oh. a, color, a color printer, mm -hmm. the printable ones are black and white. They're also two, two slides per page. It's pretty much okay. the same thing. Okay. Yeah. But it's the same content. Oh yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes people like to print them out, write notes on them. That's up to you. It's not, it's not something that's completely necessary. It, it's, it's good to, they're probably good to print out because then you can use them as a guide as you're going through the, mm -hmm. the videos as well. Because the videos are kind of like watching me in class, really. All right. Any other any other questions or concerns? Yeah, I have a unrelated question. I mean, but it's uh, about SPC faculty. Um, is are, are the schools going to open back up for um, like after quarantine ends? Like, is it going to open up for fall or is it going to open up in spring? Well. I, I, it looks like the fall because I, I was, I saw a report yesterday and I, I only seen the reports that you all see as well. Uh, plus I do have a little bit of extra information too, but what, what happened was I saw yesterday on Bay news nine that all the, all the universities in Florida are going to state universities are going to open up in the fall. 
But I also got an email from the SPC president last week who says she's very keen on, on opening in the fall. I mean, she's mm. very, uh, she wants us to be very bold about opening in the fall. That yes. being said, one thing I can definitely assure you of is that nobody's going to open anything if it's not safe. Of I, course. That much I can guarantee. So any decision that's made is going to have to be made with complete safety in mind. I mean, I uh, look at myself, I'm old. I don't, <laughs> I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get through this disease if, if I catch it. So. True. <laughs> no, you'll make it. You'll make it. For sure. <laughs> so anyways, that's, uh, that's, that's kind of where I'm at with it. Now, any other questions? Anything at all? I, I have a question, but it's actually on rated equations, so I don't want to take away from the syllabus and stuff. I can email it to you. Or, or we can just talk about it now. I mean, after after everything's been done here, I'll, I'll stay on the I'll stay on the session for a little bit, and if anybody oh, else perfect. is interested, they can hang around as well. So just just hang out for a second, Donna. You got it. Does uh, is anybody else have any other questions related to the course or concerns about grades or grading or anything else? Okay, so we'll end it here then. If anybody has any, any questions, uh, email me and I will be more than happy to answer them. If anybody has any specific questions that they want to talk about now, then hang around and I will uh, I'll continue on, but I'm not going to record this part of the session. All right, I'm going to stop recording now. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. See you, doctor. See you. Stop the video, sorry. Uh, Got to figure out how to stop sharing here. No, stop recording.